Before we start today's video, I would just like to say a massive thank you to everybody that sent well wishes to myself and Sophie. As some of you may know, if you've been paying attention to Twitter or the YouTube community tab, we are suffering with the Rona right now. To be fair, I do think I'm at the tail end of it now, so I should be okay. I'm not going to push myself too hard, but I need to start making content because, you know, that's literally my livelihood. And if I don't make content, I don't pay my bills, so... Rona! Also, since this is the first video I'm literally recording after coming back from Megacon in Birmingham, which is where I got the bloody Rona, just, it was great to meet everybody. Whoever gave me the Rona, you're a bastard. But it was great to meet everybody. It was great to take photos. There was loads of people that came up to me that I'd never met before in my life who were like, we love WTF moments. We really, we really think it's cool. And that absolutely made my freaking weekend. So thank you so much to everybody that came to say hi at Megacon, except for the one bastard that gave me the Rona. You are an arsehole. But yeah, with all the housekeeping out of the way, now it's time for the proper intro that I was planning for this video before I got struck down with the dirty virus. So take it away, Sarah Natacheni, voice of Ash Ketchum for the last 15 years. Hey, this is Sarah Natacheni. Welcome to Pokemon WTF Moments. We begin today's episode with Ash and friends arriving on the verge of entering Violet City. Bloody hell, finally! Ash is actually making some progress, is what most of us said, especially when Ash exclaims, Violet City Gym, here I come! But really, we should have known better than getting our hopes up, since they don't even get to the gym in this episode. Mate, Pokemon really do love to play the long game, don't they? Teasing bastards. Ash and friends turn around to see Pikachu being pulled around by a couple of kids as if he's some kind of big furry yellow tear and share garlic bread. Mate, kids are just the worst. I know Ash does stop Pikachu from electrocuting them, but they absolutely deserved it. Like I said, Ash grabs Pikachu before he can shock the children and ends up getting shocked himself. Seems like these kids aren't the only arseholes around here. You're telling me Pikachu wouldn't know the difference between two kids tugging on his arms and Ash grabbing him and picking him up out of the way? He absolutely would have known. The tosser. Direct quote from the kid with the red shirt after Ash tells him the Pikachu is in fact his. Aw, we thought it was a wild Pokemon. Mate, that still doesn't justify putting Pikachu through all that abuse. What, you think because the Pokemon doesn't have a trainer, it's fair game to be treated like dirt? Who the hell raised these kids? I didn't think the Manson family lived in the Pokemon world. When a woman comes over to tell the kids to go back to class and to apologize to Ash, Brock explains that his little buddy enjoys a jolt now and then. The woman then replies with, Oh, how interesting. Which is a weird response to what Brock just said, almost like she doesn't fully understand. And just thinks getting a jolt now and then is some kind of weird kink thing. Ash is confused by the concept of a Pokemon Academy. Bearing in mind he visited Pokemon Tech, a literal Pokemon school, in the ninth episode of this entire series. Ash, mate, how are you going to become a Pokemon Master when you don't even understand the things that you already know about? Screw your head on, lad. Were then introduced to the school's principal, Earl Dervish. You get it? Like whirling Dervish because he spins a lot? Real subtle Pokemon. Real subtle. Although serious question, is this Tieno's dad? As soon as the teacher, Miss Priscilla, says she just loves a person who dances with that kind of energy, Brock suddenly changes into a leotard and starts dancing alongside the principal. Mate, it's lucky dancing was the thing Miss Priscilla said she loved. Imagine the scene if she'd said, I just love a person who curb stomps children. Oh look, yet another popular gif people use on social media. And yes, I will continue to point these out. Ash goes to tell the class the most important thing a new trainer needs to know. But of course, chokes and forgets what it is. Mate, you know what your problem is, don't you? It's impossible to remember something when you don't fucking know anything in the first place. Now, if you're smarter than Ash Ketchum, and let's face it, that's really not hard, hit the like button, share this video on social media, because good lord, we really need the engagement at the moment, because I've just had a week off with Rona and... Oh, good lord. Just share the video. Leave a lovely comment down below. If you can't think of a lovely comment, leave something generic like... Bellsprout? More like Fleshlight on a Stick? Or just comment the name of the secret Pokemon I've hidden somewhere in the video. If you're new to the channel, God, I'm sorry this is your first episode, but hit subscribe anyway. Turn notifications to always on so you never miss an episode of Pokemon WTF Moments or Siri Battles or anything else that's on my channel. And of course, thank you as always for getting us to 1.75 million subscribers. I know it doesn't look like that right now, but if you subscribe today, maybe YouTube will add that extra zero. And of course, don't forget to check out my live streams over on Twitch or you'll miss out on stuff like this. I want to hear the original because it's Sophie's favourite Final Fantasy and I want to experience her favourite Final Fantasy the way she experienced it. Okay, it's her second favourite Final Fantasy after nine. But uh, it's her third favourite Final Fantasy 
after seven and after no what? Four oh fucking hell. It's one of her favorite Final Fantasies. Christ, Jesus Christ. So this kid, Zaki, calls out Ash for not winning the Pokemon League and only finishing in the top 16. And you know what? I'm actually with Zaki on this one. Ash always talks like reaching the top 16 makes him a phenomenal Pokemon trainer. When it doesn't, it just makes him someone who couldn't even reach the quarterfinals. He's very much still a novice, so he's got no grounds to be giving advice as if he were an expert. Wow. Just wow. Can you believe this is the first time we've seen Brock's Geodude and Vulpix since Brock first left the group to stay with Professor Ivy? That was like 47 episodes ago. Oh look, it's my boy! Automatically a banger episode. 10 out of 10. Well done, Pokemon. Also, you might be wondering, why does Poliwag look so worried here? It's because Misty Staryu is about to swoop in and block our view of my boy. And that's just bloody rude. Chikorita makes a point of standing directly in between Ash and Pikachu. You know, because it has a crush on Ash and doesn't want any other Pokemon to have his attention. Oh my god, Chikorita, we get it, mate. You're cringe. Let's take a moment to appreciate Bulbasaur vine whipping the crap out of Heracross to stop it from sucking on its bulb. Heracross needs to learn boundaries, and this is probably the best way. Although, Heracross, how are you even phased, mate? Vine whip's not very effective on you. Random students are climbing all over Brock's 28 foot Onyx. That is a personal injury lawsuit way to happen right there. I hope Brock's got plenty of money in his savings, because he's gonna need it if that kid takes a tumble. Brock notices a tall tower in the distance, and when Miss Priscilla says it's called Sprout Tower, Misty replies, that's a funny name for a tall building. Not really, though. Not when you consider that there are buildings in the world like the Chrysler Building, and it's not even a car, or the Staples Center, and it's not even held together with staples. I'm just saying, Sprout Tower, not even that bad. Ash asks why, if the one beam supporting the tower moves back and forth, why doesn't the whole tower come down. Miss Priscilla explains that she's actually taking the children on a field trip to the tower today, and if they're interested, they can come and see the tower for themselves. I mean, that's lovely and everything, but you could just, you know, answer his question. Like, I've no doubt Ash and friends would take you up on this offer, but do you really have to keep him in suspense like this? Just tell him what he wants to know. Pikachu electrocutes a child. That's not very protagonistic. Granted, the child was trying to steal Pikachu and sitting on him, but still. Not really setting a great example for the kids kids by solving your problems with violence, are you? Then again, that's kind of the point of Pokemon, isn't it? So I guess I'll shut up. I'll never shut up. After throwing a tantrum because Ash won't give him Pikachu, Zaki swipes one of Ash's Pokeballs and gets ready to try and catch Pikachu. And for some reason, Ash and Pikachu freak out. Mate, have you both forgotten that you can't catch other trainers' Pokemon? Let the kid throw a Pokeball. Pikachu will be just fine. Plus, this is one of your Pokeballs, so even if he does catch Pikachu with it, it'll still be your Pikachu. Pikachu darts away and Zaki runs after him and Ash yells at him that he's not supposed to leave the playground. Now, as we all know, a kid being able to escape the school grounds is a big faux pas for an educational facility. Like, that's genuinely quite dangerous. So, of course, what does Miss Priscilla, along with Ash and friends, do? They stand there and discuss whether or not there's a problem. How about going after him? For all you know, that kid could be moments away from being trampled by a Rhydon or something. I'm just saying, a little urgency wouldn't hurt, would it? In the next scene, we see Ash watch on as Zaki catches Pikachu. Now, this is a little case of Schrodinger's writing, in that it's both good writing and garbage writing at the same time. On the one hand, you can't catch another trainer's Pokemon, so therefore nobody watching would ever believe in the possibility that Ash's Pikachu was just caught by Zaki. Therefore, the writing is garbage. However, this show is written for children, and children are dumber than someone eating yogurt with chopsticks. So they would absolutely believe that Ash's Pikachu could be caught by Zaki, so that's good writing. Well done, Pokemon. You both goofed and didn't goof at the same time. After he and Ash fall into a trap dug by Team Rock, Rocket, Zaki goes to send out Pikachu and finds out he's actually caught a Bellsprout. Ah yes, everyone's favourite Johto Pokemon, Bellsprout. Wait, what? They added a hundred new Pokemon in Generation 2, and 14 episodes into this season we're getting a Bellsprout episode? Like, I get it, they're in Violet City, Sprout Tower is in Violet City, and Sprout Tower's lore is all based around Bellsprout, so when else were they gonna do a Bellsprout episode or a Sprout Tower episode? But still, the Who's That Pokemon Pokemon has been foreshadowing the next episode's feature Pokemon all season so far, and the last episode it was Togepi. So when watching the last episode, I was kinda hoping that this one would be a Togepi. 
Togepi episode, and I bet all of you were back in the day. Now, whilst everyone's shocked at the sight of this random bell sprout, nobody's addressing the elephant in the room. That's Ash's bell sprout. The Pokeball that Zaki stole, he stole from Ash. Therefore, like I said earlier, the Pokeball is Ash's Pokeball. And if you remember back to the episode where Ash caught his 30 Tauros, Brock actually helped throw some of those Pokeballs. But all the Tauros he caught ended up belonging to Ash because those were Ash's Pokeballs. Therefore, Zaki has no claim to this bell sprout. It should belong to Ash. Honestly, I feel like we've been robbed here. Like, bell sprout would have been an amazing Pokemon for Ash. Way better than Bulbasaur or Chikorita. James takes one look at bell sprout and thinks that it's Pikachu, but that Pikachu's sick. Mate, how have you lived in Kanto for so many years and never seen a bell sprout before? You've literally seen one beat the crap out of Ash's Bulbasaur. I guess we'll have to let it slide because James has only had direct experience training a weeping bell onwards. Team Rocket once again bust out voice changing megaphones that somehow perfectly mimic Ash's voice, enough to convince Pikachu to run back over to the hole. I've asked this before in a previous episode, but again, how do you think these things work? Do you think Team Rocket spent years meticulously recording snippets of Ash's voice to allow the voice changer to accurately copy him? Or do you think the voice changer just automatically comes pre-programmed with every voice that's ever existed? Answers on a postcard. Direct quote from Ash after he warns Pikachu about Team Rocket and Pikachu successfully dodges their net. I knew you'd recognize my real voice when you heard it, Pikachu. To be honest, mate, I don't think this has anything to do with recognizing your real voice. Like, Pikachu was following the orders of a voice he thought was you the whole time. Like, I'd understand if you'd have been like, No, Pikachu, it's a trap. And then Team Rocket, using Ash's voice, had been like, No, Pikachu, get in the hole quick. Team Rocket are trying to trick you. But Pikachu was only ever following the instructions of who he thought was the real Ash anyway. He heard Ash's voice call him over in this direction, so he went that way. And then he heard Ash's voice again say it was a trap. So I don't think Pikachu necessarily recognized the real voice at all. I think you're giving Pikachu far too much credit. Direct quote from James. Catch them all. Man, remember when that was something you could actually do? <laughs> well, actually, Liam, you always joke about this, but you have to agree it is stupid that we can't catch every Pokemon anymore. Mate, we've never been able to catch every Pokemon. In Generation 1, you couldn't catch all the Pokemon. If you had Pokemon Red, you couldn't catch the version exclusives from Pokemon Blue. You had to trade for them. And trading for the Pokemon is not catching the Pokemon. It's trading for them. So when it comes to the Pokemon video games, gotta catch them all has always been impossible. Although in Pokemon Legends Arceus, you can catch all the Pokemon without trading, if all means all the Pokemon that are programmed in that particular game. So that's pretty cool. Something else that's pretty cool is G Fuel! And my word, while I've been poorly, I have been living off the hydration range from G Fuel because it's full of electrolytes and all that good stuff to help keep me in tip-top condition. It's caffeine-free, by the way, the hydration range. And you can get wonderful flavors like Shiny Splash, which is a wonderful blueberry lemonade. Thank you, A-Drive, for bringing us this flavor. It's so freaking good. Oh, it's so bloody good. If you're someone who doesn't do caffeine, but you want to get some of the wonderful G Fuel flavors, go for the hydration range. Any G Fuel tub that says hydration on it is caffeine free. It even says so on the tub. And best of all, you can use code ACE, the official code of this channel, to save yourself 10% on your G Fuel orders. That applies to the caffeinated flavors, it applies to the cans, it applies to the non-caffeinated flavors, like the hydration range. Remember though, any of the caffeinated G Fuels are for over 18s only because they contain caffeine and children don't need to be anywhere near caffeine. They're annoying enough as it is and because it contains caffeine drink it responsibly don't be a dickhead dickhead. But yeah, the hydration range is fine for everyone because it doesn't have caffeine in it. Pikachu uses Thunderbolt until it causes an explosion that sends Team Rocket blasting off. Is that how electricity works though? Like if I electrocute a tree for long enough, will it explode? Not very environmentally friendly there, Ash. After Team Rocket jump into Sprout Tower through a window, we get this direct quote from Meowth. Okay, first we gotta get out of here. But mate, you've literally just come in. I thought I might have heard him wrong, so I played this line back quite a few times. But he definitely says, first we've got to get out of here, even though they literally just jumped into the building. Probably shouldn't have jumped in if your first step is to get out, mate. Team Rocket, use your noodles. Meanwhile, Zaki's got a massive mod on because he wants Pikachu and not the Bell Sprouty Corps. And at this point, he's just really getting on my tits, to be honest. The worst part is, I know if this kid in this one episode is annoying me this much, just wait till Max turns up in the Hoenn series. Misty and Ash use Poliwag and Squirtle's water guns to put out what they think is a 
fire. This is because James's wheezing has filled Sprout Tower with smoke. When they realize it's not a fire, Misty returns Poliwag. But why though? If it's not a fire causing the smoke, then it's probably something or someone more sinister. So why wouldn't you keep your Pokemon out ready to battle? Plus it's Poliwag, and my boy needs more screen time. Jesse mentions the phrase, where there's smoke, there's fire, which I always thought was there's no smoke without fire, but that's neither here nor there. But James replies, well fire's no match for our wheezing. But mate, nobody was using fire against your wheezing. I don't... I don't fully understand where you're going with this. Inside the tower, we see Team Rocket's Pokemon, minus Victory Bell for some reason. I guess Victory Bell wouldn't want to hurt Sprout Tower, maybe? Sure, let's go with that. Anyway, we see their Pokemon other than Victory Bell sawing at the beam that supports the tower. And Meowth strapped a rocket to it, hoping to send the beam flying away, thus destroying the tower. Now, understandably, Priscilla is distraught and wants Team Rocket to stop. But honestly, love, they've already cut part way into the beam. The tower's buggered. Like, even if Ash and and stop Team Rocket now, the tower's gonna be forever weakened. So it's only a matter of time before that beam splits and breaks, bringing down the tower. Pikachu willingly hands himself over to Jesse and then tries to shock her. It's then revealed that Team Rocket are wearing shockproof gloves and boots. Okay, sure, but if Pikachu just used Quick Attack and knocked Jesse down, her back would be touching the floor so she could then be shocked, so why not just do that? Come on, people, think outside the box. When Zaki says they've gotta stop Team Rocket, Ash snaps back with, Don't you think I know that, Zaki? All right, mate, calm down. Don't forget, you're normally the one that states the obvious like that. What, are you annoyed that the kid said your line before you could? Grow up, mate. After Meowth warns Ash not to bring out any Pokemon, saying one false move and he'll blow up the tower, Zaki and Bellsprout decide to use Razor Leaf. I mean, surely that would count as a false move? Like, sure, it gets the remote away from Meowth, but that was a really rash decision, mate. Like, that could have gone horribly wrong. And let's not even think about what would have happened if that would have landed button side down. Speaking of rash decisions, Ash gets Bulbasaur to grab the remote with its vine whip. And look how close it was to squeezing the big red button, and therefore almost blowing up the tower. James's wheezing is defeated by a single razor leaf, a not very effective move. And bearing in mind this bell sprout is likely at a very low level, James's wheezing is garbage pass it on. So when James told their Pokemon to hurry up, they were about halfway through sawing the beam in half. But when Team Rocket activate their missile to get away, the beam is fully cut. So does that mean Bellsprout's Razor Leaf hit with enough force to finish the sawing job for them? Wow, Bellsprout, way to help the bad guys. Bulbasaur and Bellsprout use Razor Leaf to free both Pikachu and the beam, and Team Rocket are sent flying out of the tower on their missile. But mate, that beam is knackered. Like it was completely separated, so surely it's no longer stable. Like it's survived now, sure, but sooner or later that thing's coming down. Like I'm no expert, but you might need to crack out some PVA glue lads. For some reason, even though the plan has failed and they're about to be blown up, Team Rocket are happy. Everyone's got their kinks, I suppose. Brock cries and says he doesn't want to leave, and Miss Priscilla says if he wants to stay there, he certainly may. No, Brock, step away from the teacher. We're not having another Professor Ivy situation. I'm not fully convinced you're quite over that yet. It's okay though, Brock is completely put off the idea after Earl Dervish says that he can fill out an application and stay to teach dance with him. And honestly, Brock's reaction feels like it has just a little sprinkling of homophobia behind it. Ah, the early 2000s. We really don't miss that part of you. Direct quote from Zaki. Hey Ash, if we train hard, do you think I can make my bell sprout evolve into a weeping bell and then into a victory bell? I mean, mate, if you train at all, eventually your bell sprout will evolve into a weeping bell. So it's kind of a stupid question. Victory bell you need a leaf stone for, so I guess that's a little bit trickier. Regardless, from the bottom of my heart, thank God we never have to see Zaki again. So those are my WTF moments of Pokemon Season 3, Episode 14, about with Sprout. Let me know your favourites and any of that I missed down in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Head to twitch.tv forward slash astralian for all of my live streams. And of course, use code ACE for money off G Fuel. Thank you again for all your well wishes. Hope I'm better soon. Until next time, I'm Ace Trainer Liam. Keep on training.